Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Wednesday, April 25th, 11.14 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Oklahoma suffers its 2,724th earthquake since 2010. Can you say fracking? I can. Major U.S. cities on track to potential record cold April. Buffalo stats. Normal April low. Eight currently at 30.2. Chicago, normal April low, 38.8. Currently at 31.5. Detroit, normal April low, 39.4. Currently at 32.4. Is global warming to blame? Are you kidding me? You guys must be idiots. How about the sun? If no one's told you, you are here and you're headed into the modern Eddie minimum and that's a boom. Yeah. It's not global warming, you idiots. Record April snow in North Lower Michigan. Let's talk about Gaylord. So far, 36.8 inches destroying the previous record of 27 inches. Petoski, 34.3, destroying the previous record of 19. Alpina, 30.7, destroying the previous record of 23 inches. St. Salt Marie, 27.4, well above 25.8, the previous record. Traverse City, 27.1, destroying the previous record of 17.3. Sheboygan, I love to say that, Sheboygan, 20. Beating 19.5 inches. East Tawas, 18.1. Destroying the previous record of 11 inches in April. Heads up. And that, <laughs> yeah, that's science. Not global warming. Snowfall way above normal this season. Heads up. Where are we? Providence, Rhode Island. Yes, we are way above normal. How far above normal? This season's snowfall is ranked number four. Over the past 10 years, which it's something blah, blah, blah. This is Shannon Heggie and Mike Montevizicalo. Man, look at that. You put up a little bit of snowfall in the background. A bada bing, bada boom. Put on a mint green tie and you got it. Ain't that right, Joey? That is not Joey Buttafuoco, but another Joey. Now, the third of... March nor'easter is made up for 13 inches of snow. Let's talk about it. A community collaborative rain. At this volunteer weather station in Smithfield, 77.1 inches of snow fell this season. Heads up. Well above the season normal, 33.8. And there are the bar graphs moving around. Whew. Thanks, Al Gore. I thought it would never snow again. It may never rain again in this place. This month will be among the driest April records ever. What are we talking about? Cedar Rapids, Iowa may seem a little surprising, but this month has been dry across Iowa, even though it's been snowing storm after storm after storm after storm. We have a 10 to 1 inch ratio of snow to rain. Cedar Rapids in eastern Iowa has recorded just 0.43 inches of precipitation, the lowest of April since records began here in 1953. We're going to be breaking more drought records because grand solar minimums are notorious for excessive droughts, as well as excessive hail and excessive snow. Area farms challenged by near record cold April. Did I mention excessive crop loss leading to famine and unrest? I'm sorry, I missed, I left that out. Stillwater, New York, through Tuesday. It has been the third coldest April on record and the chilliest since 1875, according to the National Weather Service in Albany. And that's going to mean loss of cattle, loss of crops, loss of production. National Weather Forecast Office out of Dodge City, Kansas. Frosty Thursday and Friday morning. Heads up. Killing freeze not expected. Lower to mid-30s each morning. Areas of frost expected. Bring tender veggies indoors if you want to save them. No tornadoes in Kansas this year. Be careful what you wish for. Let's check the GFS model. It's running. And it looks a little snowy for May, doesn't it? Snow in the Virginia mountains. Heads up, Erie. There's lots of headlines claiming that you missed the all-time record snowfall for a major city in recorded history by a single inch. But my GFS model is showing a potential single inch coming 
in the first week of May. And heads up, Adirondacks, Lake Effect, Talking Finger Lakes region, Binghamton, New York State, it's not done. Heavy snows in the southern Rockies, we need it. Snows continuing in the Sierras. Snows continuing in Oregon and Washington into May. Montana, you must might have bro broken all-time records, but all-time records can be broken again, and they will be in the coming days. Let's quick take a look at the linear progression. Here is your Tuesday, Thursday, and let's move it through. There's Friday, moderate, just a little light dusting in Wyoming as we head into Friday night. Northern Michigan, Wisconsin, you can get a little light snow. Then the Sierras light up up in the north. And there is the snow coming into New York State, Sunday night through Monday morning, as well as West Virginia mountains. The models don't lie, but they do change. But there will be snow, and that's a heads up. Floods and landslides leave 18 dead in Rwanda. Totally flux there. According to Rwanda's Ministry of Disaster Management, Midimar, at least 18 people have died in floods and landslides due to cosmic ray flux. Drought in Afghanistan affecting over 1 million people. Like we said, as predicted, Afghanistan faces the threat of serious drought this year after recording the lowest snowfall and rain in years over the 2017-18 winter. Officials said April 23rd, 22 of 34 provinces are suffering badly. We are descending into drought here in the southwest U.S. Oklahoma suffers its 2,724th earthquake since they've been injecting toxic waste in the subsurface in that region. <laughs> what in God's name are we doing to the planet? Earthquake centered in Borrego Springs felt in San Diego. Heads up, Willie. Whew, I hope you're safe. <laughs> this is nothing. People in San Diego reported feeling a slight trembler. Some of them ate Taco Bell earlier in the day. How bad will a Hayward Fault earthquake actually be? <laughs> well, as bad as uh, it actually is. So if it was an 8.0, it would be terrible. 7.0 it would be pretty bad. And what can you do to perfect, protect yourself? Let's see. See this red area? How about you move? Whew. Enough of that. Seismic update. Take a look. We've been rumbling here on the East Coast. And if you come take a quick check here, uh, well, I have bad news in a minute, so bear with me. Seven days all magnitude U.S. We're not going to be able to do it here. This is going to completely melt down, but we're going to continue anyway. Oh! There it is. Look at all the dots. But most importantly, let's draw our eyes to the East Coast. This is an uptick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 in the last seven days on the East Coast of the United States. And that whole fracking mumbo jumbo in the middle, totally disgusting. But we're going to be watching this because last week there were seven quakes. Now we've doubled. If this continues to rise up into the 50, 60 quake area on the Appalachians, we're looking for the new Madrid to blow. So this is the precursor of the precursor of what we're looking for. And we'll be watching it because I'm watching it very closely. We've got some boomers here in the West Coast, including that Borrego Springs quake, shaking Willie's underwear almost off of his knickers. And here we have an aftershock. So we have movement along the San Andreas that is probably scaring the ch out of everyone. Let's talk about some more nightmares that could be potentially happening. You guys in New Zealand experience two land-based earthquakes today. 4.6, 23 kilometers south of Takora, and then a 4.1 here a little earlier. Now look at this is at the surface on the fault. Subsequently, we have a blot echo 4.6 at exactly blot echo depth, 169 kilometers. 
which could be a precursor to a large quake in this region in the next 24 to 48 hours of a greater magnitude than 4.6. So look for a 5.5 or greater happening exactly in this area shortly. And that's the best guess we can have. There is some rumbling up here in the Europe, uh, Eastern Europe and in the Mediterranean. But no other quakes of note except this big, biggest dot on the map, 5.1, Indonesia. Let's close this and get on with the update. Gaua volcano remains in major unrest in Vanuatu, alert level at 2. Let's learn something. Gaua continues in major unrest, and the volcanic alert remains at level 2. Let's check the wiki. Formerly known as Santa Maria Island, is the largest, second most populous in the Bank Islands of the Torba province of the northern Vanuatu, covering 324 kilometers. Its eruptive history is little known. Being a geologist, I'm about, about to break it down for you here. So, the eruptive history goes back into the 1960s with a VEI 3 confirmed in 1965, September 27th. Quickly, we'll come over to the sunspot map. Looking at the data, you can see in 1965 was the bottom of cycle 19 here, the highest cosmic ray flux of the solar minimum 1920. This is a stratovolcano, and based on what we know, stratovolcanoes are silicious and violent eruptions, similar to Mount St. Helens. This volcano is a violent, silicious, muon-enhanced due to cosmic ray flux increase volcano, which is going to erupt above at at least VEI-3 or greater because the cosmic ray flux is much higher than it was at cycle minimum of cycle 19. So I'm going to estimate VEI-4 to 5 out of this volcano in the near future as it wakes up and the data ends in 1962. Uh, I checked out the caldera size and this island can erupt at VEI-6 as it has in the past, according to the geomorphic features on the surface. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Fuego, Ducono, Reventador, and Sabancaya. <coughs> Nothing important, really, or volcanic activity of note. I just want you to check out this picture of Al Gore. His hair looks amazing. Him and Donald must have the same guy. He's got about 11 hairs up here doing all this magic. And there's the turkey giblet showing through his $350 uh, tailored shirt there. Um, and as we freeze our arse off and records are broken globally, and as the Southern Hemisphere descends into this winter, you're going to see records broken like you've never seen. I can't wait till the snow tilts New Zealand. But have you heard about the study emerging that other scientists said that winter waves producing the Scottish and Irish coasts have grown by five to six inches, five feet, six inches, and that the global warming predictions are off by up to 45%. <laughs> it could be 45% less intense than widely accepted. I bet you they're more than 45% than widely accepted. I bet you we're not warming at all and we're about to drop three degrees C in your lifetime based on the historical record and science. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! Not that idiot. No dogma, please. Let's erase that. British power stations are burning wood from U.S. forests to meet renewable targets. Let's talk about these idiots. These idiots that claim that global warming is killing us, do they know that carbon dioxide emissions are causing global warming? That's their claim. Do they know that these carbon dioxide emissions from burning things are causing global warming? Do they know that deforestation is causing global warming? And yet they're burning wood and deforesting the planet to meet renewable targets to mitigate global warming. What just happened? Deforestation, burning wood, and and we're and we're doing it what's happening 
<laughs> I'll tell you what's happening. Manhattan is building a massive one billion dollar wall and park to guard against idiots that are continuing to stay in flood prone zones. <laughs> That's a boom. They're claiming that the sea level is catastrophically rising, but everyone's staying in this at sea level. And now they're going to spend a billion dollars to stay at sea level while they continue to complain about catastrophic sea level rise. It's a big circular circle of nonsense. Here's the circle of truth. <laughs> Woo! Heads up. Yeah! We're going to do it. Um, as predicted, we are not at the peak of Arctic sea ice volume. There's been an uptick today. In the last 24 hours, we have a data point that is turning this curve quickly upward to a new high, a new decadal high. We're moving well into the 2004-2013 decadal average. We have surpassed the 2015 numbers. We're headed towards 2014, and we're curving up as we get closer to May which is predicted. We should be peaking past the normal peak here, which is in the third week, third week of April. So we should be peaking at the April-May boundary. So as this turns up, it's going to peak sometime in the beginning of May and be record levels. And the obfuscation of from the truth will be very difficult. We'll be watching it. Thanks, Lee Wheelbarger, for the third straight week in a row, showing up on time and putting it down for our listeners on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, Studio A, Wednesday nights, 10 to 12 East Coast time. The Inconvenient Truth, the biggest radio show on the Internet ever conceived. Well, not really, but it's pretty darn good. And thanks to Lee Wilbarger, it's only getting better. We had a wonderful conversation about all the important logistics and preparedness items that you ever had a question about. In the last three weeks, we covered it all. I don't know if there's a more thorough covering of the logistics than what we just did. But we're going to continue to do it for your advantage and to the advantage of those that are just waking up and just coming on board. And that is a boom! To science, to Lee Wilbarger, to friends of the community, and I hope your mind is blown. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Let's quick cover it. Times are changing. The historical documentation is in. The paleoclimatologist is me. And the listener is you. Are you picking up what we're putting down? There is a thousand-year mega cycle that the sun throws out. And it rises and falls empires. In between, there's may minor blips. Sometimes it gets cold for a very long time. And sometimes these grand solar minimums coincide with the end of the interstadial. This is a warm time between glacial cycles. And we're about to drop off a cliff off this map into the next glacial period. Major glacial cycle. We live in an ice age. And you're living into the change into the next epoch. What does that mean for you and yours? It means you have time to prepare. Not a lot of time. We're going to see exactly in the next two years how bad it will be. And in the meantime, every second wasted is a second wasted. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Please subscribe to our channel, share this with like-minded people, and boom! Be safe, everyone.